Hello and welcome to Midday Connection on Wednesday, July 6th here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're here to do what we usually do on Wednesdays, and that's to do a midweek connection. And I'm grateful that Natalie is here with us again uh, to read our texts from the Daily Lectionary and to uh, talk about it and see, what, uh, see how the Lord's going to bless us today. So let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you so much for your incredible love for us and the way that you are calling all people to, to yourself, to worship you in the spirit of truth and holiness. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, your word to us today would be useful for that which you would have uh, for it to do. Uh, I'm grateful for this time, and we thank you, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Today we're going to start with Psalm 96, and uh, if you've been watching with us for a while, you know that the daily lectionary psalms uh, are on a weekly repeating cycle, and so sometimes we do read the same psalm uh, many times in a row, and I do think it's a, a discipline that we should follow in terms of recognizing that God's Word is always living and active, and it is useful for correcting us and instructing us. And sometimes we need to read things over and over again for us to really truly get into it. So uh, even though it's familiar to us, um, it's still good for us. Let's go ahead and read, starting it with Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew scripture reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. These are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan, in the wilderness, on the plain opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel, Laban, Hezrah, and Dizahab. By the way of Mount Seir, it takes 11 days to reach Kadesh Barnea from Horeb. In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses spoke to the Israelites just as the Lord had commanded him to speak to them. This was after he had defeated King Sihon of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, and King Og of Bashan, who reigned in Ashtoreth, and in Indrai. Beyond the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses undertook to expound this law as follows. The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Resume your journey and go into the hill country of the Amorites as well as into the neighboring regions, the Arba, the hill country of Cephala, the Negev, and the seacoast. 
the land of the Canaanites and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land that I swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their descendants after them. At that time I said to you, I am unable by myself to bear you. The Lord your God has multiplied you, so that today you are as numerous as the stars of heaven. May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times more and bless you as he has promised you. But how can I bear the heavy burden of your disputes all by myself? Choose for each of your tribes individuals who are wise, discerning, and reputable to be your leaders. You answered me. The plan you have proposed is a good one. So I took the leaders of your tribes, wise and reputable individuals, and installed them as leaders over you, commanders of thousands, commanders of hundreds, commanders of fifties, and commanders of tens, and officials throughout your tribes. I charged your judges at that time, give the members of your community a fair hearing, and judge rightly between one person and another, whether citizen or resident alien. You must not be partial in, judgment, in judging. Hear out the small and the great alike. You shall not be intimidated by anyone, for the judgment is God's. Any case that is too hard for you, bring to me, and I will hear it. So I charged you at that time with all the things that you should do. From Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 18. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and increasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. It is not as though the word of God had failed, for not all Israelites truly belong to Israel, and not all of Abraham's children are his true descendants. But it is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as descendants. For this is what the promise said, About this time I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. Nor is that all something similar happened to Rebekah, when she had conceived children by one husband, our ancestor Isaac. Even before they had been born or had done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose of election might continue, not by works, but by his call, she was told, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, I have loved Jacob, but I have hated Esau. What then are we to say? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So it depends not on human will or, or exertion, but on God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for the very purpose of showing my power in you, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he chooses, and he hardens the heart of whomever, whomever he chooses. Our gospel passage today comes from Matthew chapter 23, verses 27 through 38. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside they are full of the bones of the dead and all kinds of filth. So you also on the outside look righteous to others, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus. You testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your ancestors. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how can you escape being sentenced to hell? 
Therefore I send you prophets, sages, and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue them town to town, so that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Barachiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I tell you, all this will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name. Psalm 132. O Lord, remember in David's favor all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jarar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Footstool. Rise up, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your faithful shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a sure oath from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my decrees that I shall teach them, their sons also forevermore shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it to be his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priests I will clothe with salvation, and its faithful will shout for joy. There I will cause a horn to sprout up for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed one. His enemies I will clothe with disgrace, but on him his crown will gleam. And our final psalm today is Psalm 134. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Natalie, I think again we've got some interesting passages to deal with today. Um, which is, I think, fairly typical when we start looking at these texts. So uh, Deuteronomy, if you, if you aren't aware, Deuteronomy just means, uh, from the Greek, the second telling of the law. Uh, and uh, throughout this book, Moses is going to do an interesting uh, recount of a lot of their journey from exile to receiving the law to God uh, giving to Moses the... Um, the commandments when they go into the promised land about uh, if you do these things you'll be blessed if you do these things you're going to be cursed and he gives them that choice set before them choose these things uh, choose the blessings but ultimately uh, uh, God says that even when you fall away God will be faithful and so this beginning passage of Deuteronomy is this beginning section of Moses reminding the people of, of what had happened and so uh, they're talking about their uh, leaving, uh, uh, ex uh, when they left Egypt, they're out into the wilderness, and Moses is recounting to them that they uh, are a, a numerous people. He needed to appoint some other uh, rulers and judges to be in certain places, but ultimately all of these things, uh, if they needed to appeal anything, they could come and talk to Moses, and then Moses would talk to God. But there's a line in there that I'm, I'm really... Uh, impressed by where these judges that Moses appoints, these, these wise people from the various tribes, um, in a way Moses is saying that they have the capacity within themselves to, to discern from the Lord uh, good things to do and right judgments to make between people. But he reminds them here in Deuteronomy of something that I think we all too often take for granted, and then we think, well, why does it have to be written in the Bible if it were such a regular thing? Why does it need to be written in the Bible?
the Bible, because I think there's a lot of things written in the Bible that are not actually regular things. But he says that you must not be partial in judgment to hear out the small and the great alike. You shall not be intimidated by anyone, for the judgment is God's. And I think that is a good reminder for us uh, that uh, should we ever assume to be in judgment over, over people, uh, to, to recognize that it's, it's God's judgment that needs to be accomplished. That making a distinction between rich or poor, or between people that are of our class and other classes, whatever it might happen to be, you know, this is why it needs to be written in the Bible. I think humans just have a tendency, especially in judgment. You know, you hear about it, and um, you know, we like to say we hear about it in foreign countries all the time. But how often do we think it actually occurs in the United States? How often do you think that people with uh, uh, political connections or people with uh, great wealth are able to influence, influence the courts. The courts. Um, you know, I'm not going to comment on any particular case, but I do think that there are ways that we can, at least it very much appears to people that there are a, a different tier of justice that's being meted out. You know, if you've got the connections, you might get a little bit of a penalty. If you don't have the connections, you know, you get a harsher one, or some people are just let free, some people have a book thrown at them. Um, so again, it's just like, how do we judge? How does the world judge? How does God judge ultimately? And the people of faith are called to uh, not show partiality when they are making judgments. Well, and I found it very interesting in this Deuteronomy passage, he says, um, the Lord your God has multiplied you mm -hmm. so that today you were as numerous as the stars of heaven. And, um, you know, may the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times more. But it talks about the, you know, the number of stars and that, that mm -hmm. Psalm 147 that we read over and over mm -hmm. again. And it says, you know, in that Psalm 147, it makes the statement that he names all the stars. Mm -hmm. Well, if he names the stars, then of course, you know, we as people have so much more value than a star. And so the people that were entering the promised land, there was no accident. He knew every single one of them. And then, um, you know, you jump into that Romans passage and it's talking about um, how, um, let's go, let me go look here. Well, that line that not every the, person of Israel is actually true Israel. And, right, and then, right. yes, that there are descendants of Abraham that were not descendants, but they were chosen by God. Right. And so none of us are an accident. Mm -hmm. None of us are being called by accident. And then back to that Deuteronomy saying to judge them fairly, no matter how big or so how small, it doesn't right. matter. And so there's value in the smallest yeah, of us. That's a great pickup. There's... Um, and he goes, God goes on to say that if anything is too hard for you, bring it to me. Mm -hmm. So even if it's a case with the small people, it is worthy to be bought, brought, not bought. <laughs> right. It is worthy to be brought before God himself. Wow. Right. And so I, I don't think any of us, and then like you said, just because you are a descendant biological versus not, we were adopted. Mm -hmm. We were called, and there's value in each and every one of us. So that was interesting, the repetitive verbiage um, and how that all fell into place. Right. Today. No, I think that's a great pickup. Uh, how regularly I think the world, um, you know, I, I think I was just reminded the other day, I've got all three of my kids home right now for the summer, and uh, social media is out there a lot, you know, even in my own household, and I am regularly reminded of how there are people that spend so much time of their day really just trying to be recognized, uh, trying to get that taste of fame. And, and um, you know, we've got so many different things, uh, uh, so many ways on social media that people can monetize themselves in a way that, uh, oh, just like me, like me, like me. And, and then I'll even get compensated for that. Right. And, and so just, uh, I like how you made that pick up that even uh, even for the poor or for the weak, that their cases are worthy to be brought before the Lord. Uh, I think that's that's an important pick up. Um, and just touching a little bit back on that Romans nine passage, 
that uh, that God knows again how God stands outside of time and he knows what humans are going to choose to do he he knows the good things and he knows the bad things and he and uh, this whole idea about um, God you know choosing or or recognizing that it's going to be Jacob that he loves uh, and and not Esau um, but we all know that Jacob was not the most righteous of guys you know right. he, he makes mistakes all the time but in, there's something about Jacob that that God sees and God knows that he's going to work through Jacob to accomplish his purposes and and he even works through Esau to accomplish his purposes and right. that's where the idea of being known by God and being a part of God's covenant community, um, like you said, adopted into the family of faith, how important right. that is. He says, you know, he even uses Pharaoh to show his power. Right, right. And so, right, um, it's, right, his his will, his power, his, his will will be done. Right. And, and it's too bad we didn't read all of the, Matthew chapter 23, right? We came, in, we came in halfway through, but this is the uh, famous chapter of the woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. This is uh, Jesus speaking these words. Uh, this is obviously prior to his arrest and prior mm -hmm. to his crucifixion. Um, and probably in a lot of ways, maybe what put those scribes and Pharisees over the edge in terms of ultimately arresting Jesus and, uh, right. and getting him condemned to death. But... Uh, uh, just thinking about how um, outward appearances where where again in Deuteronomy we're told to judge rightly don't right. make a preference between rich and poor um, but here are the scribes and Pharisees that look beautiful on the outside but are whitewashed tombs inside full of bones and filth and it's just like man Jesus those are some those are some pretty harsh words right. uh, and even this whole idea of how they perform things in order to be seen on earth, uh, but but how mm -hmm. but how God is the one who's ultimately working His purposes and is going to accomplish His purposes. Um, but then I know we didn't read all of chapter twenty-three, but go back and read it if you want to get a couple extra woes in there. But but starting there in verse thirty-seven, this anguished cry that Jesus makes. Uh, for for his city, for his holy city, the place where he has set up his his holy habitation. You know this whole idea of you know Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. And I just think that the 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 grace and the mercy of God that is always available, even to the scribes and the Pharisees if they had repented, available to them, and they. They choose to continue to do things that are contrary to what God calls us to do. Yeah. Um, and, and I look at our world today, and I think uh, God must weep at, uh, at our inhumanity against one another. You know, we know over the July 4th weekend that there were uh, highly publicized shootings, and those are just the ones we hear about. You know, there, there is obviously... Um, you know, violence occurring all over uh, our world, uh, you know, sometimes close to home, sometimes far away, but all over our world. And I think that just really breaks the heart of God. I think uh, his, his desire is to gather us together, right. but his, his children, his creation continue to war against everybody else. And um, what a responsibility that we have as believers uh, to to break those cycles, to be people of of peace and of of, of proper uh, judgment between rich and poor, uh, to be people who are are seeking to uh, share the good news with others that they might themselves be adopted into the family of God. Uh, how much more depressing when the family of God even fights against itself? Right. Yeah. He knows their names. He knows their hearts. Mm -hmm. He desires the good and the bad hearts mm -hmm. that he sees. He still desires that connection, mm -hmm. that that family, uh -huh. that to cover, to protect. Um, that's you know pretty incredible. Yeah, that certainly is character. Um, 
And uh, you know, in the first uh, first song that we read today, uh, ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, the glory do His name. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm really challenged again by the fact that God created us to be in a relationship with us, that God gave us creative abilities, that God gave us in a lot of ways uh, godlike capacity to to have power and dominion and authority that's supposed to be exercised in God's way uh, with justice and with mercy and how we've used those things, but how important we are to the heart of God. Uh, and, and even those people that are living lives apart from him, um, how we as the family of, of, of God are, um, are called just to love and serve other people. Yeah, we just got to give him the glory, right? That's just kind of the thing. Give him the glory. Quit trying to take it for yourself. Right. <laughs> it's like things will work out a little bit better that way. You know, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Um, yeah, less of Joel, more of Jesus. <laughs> and it's too hard to do that as speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard. <laughs> and sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. Well, um, again, I, I think uh, every time we do this, it's an opportunity to be reminded of God's love uh, and to be encouraged to just keep moving forward and doing those things that God's called us to do. So thanks for joining me today. Would, would you like to close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. Great. Gracious Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word to us today. Thank you for your love for us, your unending love. No matter how far we turn, no matter what we've done, we um, can always turn back to you. And I pray that we um, can look to you and look to your son and that we reconcile ourselves to you and that we do lay um, the hard things at your feet and that we recognize that the least of us, the greatest of us, um, we recognize that we are all your children. We are all called into that adoption, and I praise you for that. And um, I pray that we can see one another uh, through your eyes and that we can care for those around us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. Again, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, do feel free to call up to the church and we can listen to those and certainly pray for you. Uh, looking forward to again worshiping together here in the sanctuary at 1030 on Sunday morning and uh, here at the corner of uh, Irving and College at 32 North Irving Street. So blessings to you. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a blessed day. Take care. Bye-bye.